DSD Hacking 101. I'm Raggable. And I'm Pox. And this is episode 16 of PSP Hacking 101. Surprisingly, it's an actual full-blown episode. Yeah, this is, uh, this is pretty rare for us to have this many episodes yeah, in a month I had recently. Planned, yes, <laughs> I planned just to do an update to 15, but with some recent news and programs, it's a full-blown episode. Dev hook sample launcher. Full-blown 2.5 emulation on a 1.5 PSP. Yes. What does that mean? You're the one who's covering it. You tell him. It means you can play all the newest games on your 1.5 PSP much easier than before. And like can, sleep mode and Wi-Fi and all that. Yeah, and you can use the web browser and all sorts of cool stuff. Location-free player. Good, good. What else is new? Uh, what else is new? The mod chip! If you haven't you know, heard or seen on our site and all the multiple places, uh, there is a PSP mod chip out. Uh, due to ship sometime next week, 14th around, and uh, we're, we're, we're getting one. Yeah. And it's going to be episode 17. Episode 17. It's and all the Modchip. Our gracious sponsors, uh, modchipstore.com, are going to ship us one as soon as possible, and as soon as we get that lovely package, we are going to film our experience with that. Yes. Good or bad. Ooh, <laughs> could I can't be wait. Any, could be another PSP to TV, or it could be the Holy Grail. Yeah, you can you can just uh, you can you can you can boot up in either 1.5 or you can just boot up in 2.7964 whatever the hell Sony keeps throwing at us to kill our our beloved homebrew. <laughs> yes, um, and if you'd like to pre-order that mod chip, there is a link to the mod chip store on our website. Uh, please go there and uh, click on that link so they know that you're coming from our show. We'd appreciate that. Yeah, then we can we can continue kicking out more episodes. And also, oh, I forgot to mention, um, the addendum to episode 15 is we mentioned USB ISO loading through DAX. Uh, we didn't cover anything. That's what I'm going to be doing today. Yeah. So I think that's, uh, let's get to it. Let's okay, go. let's get into that. How to load ISOs to the USB connection uh, using DAX.62. Why, why would you want to do that? Uh, you can store a whole bunch more uh, ISOs on on your computer than you can on a little itty bitty 32 megabyte stick. Really? Yes. Imagine that, huh? Of course, you have to be you know tied to your PC or laptop at the same time. But hey, um, the price you pay for fast load times. Anyways, uh, what you need to do is first off, download a couple of files. Uh, the first one is called USB host fs underscore bin. This is the file that contains the PRX file for the PSP. Uh, it contains the PC application side of things. And uh, this will be the folder that you locate, or the folder that has the PC app, that's where you're going to place your ISO, ISOs as well. Okay. After that, you need to download the USB drivers for the PC side called libusb 132 blah 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 version. Goes off for a bit. Anyways, uh, extract those files, and then in the USB host FS folder, uh, there will be a folder for the PSP, and then in that folder, there's the PRX file. You need to copy that to the DAX ZISO folder on the root of the memory stick. Okay. After that, you need to modify the INI file for DAX ZISO, aptly named DAX ZISO.ini. This is also located in the DAX ZISO folder on the root of the memory stick. In this INI file, there will be a host section and three variables that you have to change. The driver, name, and type. Right beneath those, there should be a comment section detailing what each of those variables should be set to when you want to use USB ISO loading. Just go ahead and use those settings and then I'll also post a INI example file that you can copy and paste from. After that, plug in the USB cable to your PSP before you run DAX. After that, run DAX, and if the INI file is set up properly and the PRX file is there, 
window should detect a new device. After that, you need to run a PC application called INF Wizard. This is the in the folder for the lib USB 132 platform, and it's in the folder, it's in the bin folder. And run that. It'll ask you which system you want to extract files for. Choose PSP Type B. Go ahead and place those files in the same folder you ran this application from. Manually choose to install the driver and specify the driver path going to that libusb 132 slash bin folder where you extracted those files with an F wizard. After that, just install it. Good to go. After that, go ahead and create the ISO folder in the USB host FS PC folder. Go ahead and name it ISO and in there put your ISOs. Uh, on the naming convention for this though, you need to name them in a unique way because DAX will list both ISOs from the memory stick and from the PC. So a good convention that they've set up to follow is place uh, an R through a T in front of the file. So like R Mercury, T Mercury, S Mercury, something along the lines of that. And it also helps with compatibility issues I've read as far as it working. After that, you need to go back to that USB host FS folder and there will be another PC application to run. Run that and Windows, depending on which you know, version you have, will ask you to unblock it if you have Service Pack 2 installed. Unblock it and then after that, that should see the ISOs on your PC side and you can load those up. Just select the one you want and run, run with them. Sound good, Pox? Sounds good to me. Sounds complicated, but I'm sure if you'd look through the show notes and, and rewatch the video a few hundred times, you'd probably figure, figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if, if I've spent on too much for this, I will reference the article that I'm pretty much following, and it's on Max Console. So if all else fails, just go there. All right. Fox here, and I'm going to show you the latest, greatest thing in homebrew. Uh, this is the device hook sample launcher. And the, what this lets you do is run full emulation on your 1.5 PSP of the 2.5 firmware. Or actually, um, potentially higher, depending on you know when they upgrade it. But right now, 2.5. And you can do things like you can launch the web browser, you can run the location free player, uh, and more importantly, you can play all the latest UMD games on your 1.5 PSP. So no need to upgrade your firmware, which is really fantastic. It just temporarily boots into it. Uh, it's a fair, fairly simple to install. It's a lot like uh, what you had to do in the last episode with the, the DAX ZISO loader. Um, after you download it, uh, you extract everything onto the memory card. There's a folder that goes in the root directory. There's a folder that goes in the PSP games directory. Now, one thing to note is that uh, depending on where you get this, like uh, the one from our show notes, it doesn't include the eBoot files. So you're going to have to run MPH Firmware Launcher to go ahead and extract those out and get those and, and dump them and put them in the necessary uh, directories. Um, then you just go ahead and launch it on your PSP, just like any other eBoot. Once you've launched DevHook, you get a little menu here. And this is pretty straightforward. Um, you can select the UMD disk that you're using, or if you're using ISOs, you can load those too. Um, UMD mount, uh, UMD disk is what we're going to be using because we're going to launch GTA. Um, UMD version, no change, don't need to bother with that. Uh, firmware, 2.5 to plus 2.0. And uh, clock speed, if you want the Wi-Fi to work, just leave it set at 222 megahertz. Uh, right now, there's a problem with that. If you overclock it, then it kills the Wi-Fi. Um, then just go ahead and launch it. Go up to start, hit O, zero or circle. <laughs> Your PSP will look like it's rebooting, and when it comes back, you shall see the little web browser icon, which means that you're running in 2.5 mode. Now, uh, the version that I'm running here is 0 .2, or 0 0.40. And there's also a 0.41, which has full support of all the features in 2.5, except for Wi-Fi doesn't work. And there's also a patch, or 0.41A. 
and that fixes a few little bugs, but still no Wi-Fi. So here we have GTA running on a 1.5 PSP, which you've seen before in episode 13, but this one is a little bit um, a little bit nicer because you have the full firmware to play with. You can go into the web browser and everything. So have fun with your 1.5 PSPs, and you can do everything that those guys have been doing on their 2.5s for the past couple months, and you don't lose any functionality of your 1.5 PSP. All right, all right, all right. Oh, okay, we're ending now, so we just should be a little mellower. Oh, all right. All right. Hey, all right, all right. cool, all right. That was episode 16, <laughs> and my very rushed through explanation of how to get USB loading. And uh, my little tutorial on how to get started with the dev hook. Sample launcher. Sample launcher. The device hook. Device hook, the really cool thing that, that almost seems like, why do you even need that mod chip anymore? Okay. But you need the mod chip though. Yes. Because yes, if you, you're running, you've got to have that mod chip. If you're 2.7 and you're missing out on all the fun of all of our episodes because most of them are focused around 1.5, yep. if you get that mod chip, you can load on there 1.5. And everybody can live in the best of both worlds. Yeah. And if you like totally uh, screwed up your, your PSP with one of those bad e boots, you can pop that puppy on there and run firmware. And... Yeah. Um. I don't know if the, the dual boot would work that with if you with a flip well, one or not, but we'll find out. Eh, anyways, modchipstore.com, that's where you can get one of those. Yes. Uh, if you're gonna go there, like we said before, please go through there through our site as you heard about them through us, I hope, and please show them your yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Episode uh, sixteen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, um, the usual, you know, subscribe to the feed, you know, get the numbers Burst up the on forums. there. Um, the, D the DVDs 1, 2, and 3 are out, and they're only 10 bucks a piece. Uh, catch you a deal if you get more than one. Details on the website. Uh, there'll be a DVD 4 coming out in July. How come we can't just use the same canned footage every time you say that? Well, uh, you say the same thing at every end, you just re that replace would, it. That would be boring. <laughs> but you are saying the same thing. Oh. Subscribe to the forums. <laughs> Wait, no. <laughs> subscribe to the forums. <laughs> uh, people on the forums are asking if they get shout outs. Again? Yeah. We only got one last time oh. from Romilius, and did we ever play that? Yeah, we played Romilius on there, but he hasn't been on for a while. But, uh, That's how far we go. Kotsos has been, been moderating, doing a great job. Kotsos? 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 Kotsos. Uh, he wants a shout out? Yeah. Well, no, he didn't want one, but I'm giving him one. Ah, shout out. He got out. So, <laughs> all right. Well, if you want a shout out, uh, send us a video. Yeah, send uh, us a video clip saying hi or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, episode 16. Out. Sweet, new firmware. Oh. Computer, we have a code 27. Computer to the corner of Smith and Wesson. This has been a Two Smart Guys production.